Uh, Panos is uh, from Mozilla, which I also want to mention upstairs, the Mozilla Lounge is going to be doing a workshop right after this talk. So if you're interested, I believe it's in Firefox OS, but I could be mistaken in often M. Either way, you should go up, check it out. It should be a lot of fun. But Panos is going to be talking to us today about testing and testing various browsers from Firefox. Um, so he'll take it from here. Another round of applause. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Panos Astizas, and the title of my talk this morning is Write Once, Debug Everywhere from Firefox. And the title came from my previous experiences as a Java developer back in the day, where the motto used to be Write Once, Run Everywhere. And we were so excited about it, and everybody jumped around. And lately, we uh, later, we discovered that the actual state of things was write once, debug everywhere, which wasn't so good. But then, as we grew up and moved on to web development, what I discovered that the reality here is more like write once, debug everywhere, each time with different tools, which is even worse. So in a way, uh, my talk today is about how we could make the tools that we use talk to each other. Because tools, as well as people, get better when they communicate. So uh, just a few words about me. I work on Firefox for the past four years, recently as a tech lead for Valence, the project that I'm going to be talking about today. Previously, I worked on the debugger, console, network panel, lots of stuff. And even before that, I did things like server-side development, mobile development. And I really felt the pain of having to use different development environments for a single project. So this is something that I would like to see fixed. Today, we'll talk about the problem. We'll define it. And I'll speak about Valence, the solution that we think uh, fits the domain. I'll talk more about how it works what you can do with it, what kind of uh, debug targets you can use it uh, towards, why we chose to ship it as an add-on instead of bundling it inside Firefox proper, how do you install it, and as an engineer, I consider it my moral obligation to have at least one slide in my talks with actual code, so we'll get to do that near the end. So the problem. I'm not sure if you have recently uh, seen the desks of web developers who are really passionate about their work and have to test their code in many different environments from other browsers, from uh, other device form factors. But the ones that I've seen usually look a little bit like this, which is kind of insane. It's, you know. The left one tests Firefox, and the other one tests Chrome, and in the middle it's IE or, I don't know, iPad simulator or whatever. But what I really want to do, what I really want to work with is something more like that, like the serenity of a single laptop, like an empty desk that has space for a notebook, even an espresso on the side. I mean, this is the dream, right? So. Let's break the test down. I am your average web developer. I have this web app, well, this sorry excuse of a web app, which is my website, but bear with me. Um, and I want to make sure that it works correctly across all browsers, all form factors. So how do I start? I'm a Firefox fan. I'm more comfortable with the Firefox developer tools, so I make sure it works in Firefox first. You've got to start somewhere. So I use the tools I'm familiar with. I inspect my code. I debug it. I test the performance. I fine tune it around here. So in the end, it's OK. I'm happy. I'm done. And I want to uh, make sure that it works on Chrome. So what I do, I fire up Chrome. Um, I fire up Chrome developer tools, and I'm presented with a slightly different environment. It's it's not that this is completely different, like a, an entirely outlandish piece, but it's more like the layout is slightly uh, weird to what I'm uh, expecting. And maybe the labels are different. Maybe the labels are the same, but they do something different. You know the thing. So I mean, I'm an experienced developer. I can manage. I put some more effort into it. 
I fix the quirks that manifest themselves only in this particular browser. And once I'm done, I move on to the next thing, which is Safari. So I start Safari. I open the Safari web tools, which are, once again, even more different. And I don't see many labels here. I see more icons, a lot of purple, maybe. And perhaps the motivation I have for doing this kind of work starts to diminish, because I get less productive because the tools are not working as I expected them to be. And I'm not even done yet, because next I have to move to IE and use another set of tools which looks entirely different. And to be fair, this is not a, a, a failure of the tools themselves. I mean, these tools are finely crafted for their particular audiences and do their job well. The problem is that each developer has their own preference. And th what they would like to do is use the tool they're most familiar with to debug a web application, a standards-based web application, running in all platforms, all browsers. So and let me remind you that we haven't even talked about mobile yet. So things should probably get better. And the question I want to pose to you today is, is this as good as it gets, or can we do any better than that? And by better, I mean something like this. The tools that I'm comfortable with, the Firefox developer tools, being able to debug a web app running in Chrome without me having to switch to a different tool set and learn a different paradigm. And I'm sure you won't be surprised to know that Valence provides exactly that. And we'll get to how this works in a minute. So Valence is an add-on that we developed that lets you debug web apps running in other browsers. But before I get to uh, the details of how it works, it would be useful, I think, to give you a quick primer of how uh, the developer tools in Firefox are architected. The main architecture is a client-server piece that has the tool user interface, the thing that you interact with by pressing buttons and clicking on checkboxes and uh, typing in input forms as the client part. And that client part communicates with the server through the Firefox Remote Debugging Protocol, which has its own specification, which is uh, open. And everything, of course, is open source, but even the spec is documented. And the debugger server is mostly a container for various actors, which are entities that control the individual features of a uh, low-level platform, things like um, objects in the JavaScript virtual machine, uh, style sheets, individual styles, uh, nodes in the markup, etc. And of course, in the bottom, you have the browser engine, which contains the virtual machine, the rendering engine, and stuff like that. So in this architecture, when you introduce valence, it, what it does, it extends the debugger server with an, an adapter that contains new actors that know how to speak the WebKit or Blink remote debugging protocols to communicate with external browsers. So Valence provides the debugger server with the ability to target a remote browser and handle those um, individual platform features over the foreign remote debugging protocol. So Valence, what it does is it extends the debugger server. It provides an adapter for external browser backends. It knows how to speak the WebKit and Blink remote debugging protocols, and in the future, we hope even more. And it does that by being asynchronous to a whole new level, and I'll show you a little bit about that. And the way we manage to accomplish that is by making heavy use of uh, ES6 or ES2015, as we heard before, promises and generator functions. It also includes a third-party open source library called iOS uh, WebKit Debug Proxy, a uh, Google-sponsored open source project that provides a thin layer of transport to iOS devices like iPhones, iPads, even the iOS simulator. And we also bundle a Windows clone of that project in our Windows platform builds. So with Firefox, what you can do is you can debug your web app in any Firefox product, like Firefox desktop, Firefox on Android, and Firefox OS devices, phones, TVs, etc. 
And with the addition of valence, you can now communicate and debug web apps running on Chrome on desktop, Chrome on Android, and Safari on iOS. And we hope that in the future we'll provide the ability to debug web apps running Internet Explorer and Node. One of the questions that I get a lot is why ship it as an add-on? Why not bundle it inside Firefox? And there are a number of reasons for that. One is that Valence as a project has some external dependencies that Firefox doesn't have. It depends on the release cadence of other browsers, like Chrome or Safari. Um, it depends on changes to the published remote debugging protocol of those browsers and things that they might become obsolete or modified or broken. And we, what we really need to do is be able to iterate rapidly once these things happen. And the release cadence of the Firefox browser, even with the wrapped release schedule, is not suitable for that purpose. In addition to that, we found that um, moving the code to an add-on makes it easy to host it in a separate GitHub project, so people, external contributors, can find it easier to contribute, fix bugs, provide new features. And it also helps us minimize the developer tool's footprint inside Firefox for the users who are not interested in developing, in debugging their web apps in other browsers. So being mindful of that is good as well. So how do we install this thing? We're all engineers, right? We know how it goes. You go to your terminal. You uh, clone your stuff. You compile. You make. You install. You run. Well, that's usually how it happens, but not in Firefox, because Firefox is about automating the, uh, the needy, greedy details for you. So what you do is you go to the hamburger menu click on the developer um, button, and then select WebID. WebID is our uh, entrance to remote debugging in Firefox. And in the runtime list, what you will see then is the Chrome and Safari runtimes. Because what has happened is that the first time that you try to launch WebID, it will go behind the scenes, reach the uh, Mozilla servers, download the add-on, install it, um, initialize it, so you get your extra runtimes there. And if you have an Android device connected to the computer via USB, you will even see that in the list of USB devices or your Firefox OS devices or what have you. So pretty simple. You don't have to do anything. You already have it, essentially, when you need it. Now let's get a little bit more technical. Let's talk about how actors are implemented. Firefox actors are pretty standard JavaScript objects, and they contain methods that receive requests from the client side to perform various operations. And these requests are formatted in the standard way that the remote debugging protocol specifies. And a simple one looks like this. This is the, the function that gets called once you type something in the web console and hit Enter. It's the on evaluate JavaScript function, which is, uh, which you can see here, not in its entirety. I just removed the error handling and some initialization stuff, but it's pretty much the code that runs in your Firefox today. So what it does is it takes the request, it extracts the text property that contains the string that you typed in the console, it uses a low-level debugger API in SpiderMonkey to make the evaluation of that expression, grabs the return value, makes a few checks about error conditions, et cetera, and extracts the return value and sends it back to the client. It's pretty straightforward, like your standard JavaScript method, I suppose. So the difference in the implementation of the valence actor it has to do mostly with asynchronicity. So this is the same function that is executed every time you type something in the Firefox web console, hit Enter, and that expression gets evaluated in Chrome. If you ignore the async method um, uh, helper to reduce some of the boilerplate in our protocol handling, what you see is that we have a generator function, a star function that receives the expression that the user sent. And then what it does, 
the first thing it has to do is to go across the Chrome debugging protocol, make a request for the evaluation, and yield uh, the execution back to the main thread. Once the result is back, it needs to take the response and make that uh, previewable. And it does that by making a new request to load preview. And the reason for that is to get a more useful representation of the result so that we can display it in the web console in a colorful and easy to expand way. So this time, another pause until the remote uh, protocol request returns. And after that, we were then ready to check for errors, grab the result, and return. I would say that the second method is not more uh, verbose than the first one. I would say that they're equally concise. I've removed around 10 or 20 lines from each that have to do with error handling and uh, details like that. But it's just that the nature of the programming is slightly different. And I think for people who are not used to programming with generator functions and promises, this will look a whole lot better. So how does it feel to work with valence compared to what we have today? Let's take a look at that. This is me debugging my web application on Firefox desktop, as before, nothing changed. But the same tools I use here, I can use to debug my web application running on Chrome without switching uh, tools or browsers or anything. I can make sure, as you can see here, I have highlighted the image and that's the margins and the paddings are highlighted by Chrome's inspector underneath. But what controls the Chrome inspector is Firefox through valence. And if I want to make sure that it runs well on my iPhone, I could run it through valence on the iOS simulator, as in the screenshot, or in an actual device connected to my computer. And what would happen is that the um, Safari inspector would highlight the page, but be in direct control of valence um, that I uh, handle through my toolbox. And I, what is also obvious here is that I really need to fix the formatting of my page on iPhone. So. But another thing that I want to stress is that this is not a, a, a need that we discovered that people must have. People have tried similar approaches in the past. There's a list of similar projects here, like in the same general direction. So I think that this is an actual need that our users have today. And I think all browser vendors should step up and help their users be more productive by providing something similar to Valence. And of course, Valence is open source. Everyone is ha uh, we are happy for everyone to take the code and reuse it and extend it and do the great open source things we do. And as a parting thought, I would stress that as engineers, our duty is to program to web standards. But we mustn't forget that we need to make sure that our web applications run well on the platforms our users use. And making sure that our program runs on a single platform is not cool. It's us going back into the IE6 days that we all are happy that are past us. So um, I would like to make sure that you can see uh, the slides here. There's links to documentation for you. I'm happy to take questions and feedback over Twitter. That's the, my team's um, Twitter handle as well. There are a few links to Valence and WebID, the main platform feature that we use to communicate with remote processes. And uh, everyone is welcome to get involved with the code. It, this is fully open source code. We're happy to get any help we can. And last but not least, note that there's a Firefox OS workshop today at 11, and they're giving away bags like this. So it's the Mozilla Demo Lounge on the second floor. It starts in a few minutes, and I'd be happy to see you there. So that's all from me. Thank you.